This is Standing Watch. And now, Evangelist Norbert Link. Greetings, everyone. And welcome back to our Standing Watch program. How much is Germany leading continental Europe? And at the same time, how far is the exit, the exodus of Great Britain, the United Kingdom? And how close is it? Now, of course, we have been telling you for many, many years that ultimately Europe will unite under German leadership and that Great Britain or the United Kingdom is not going to be part of it. Today, I'd like to give you the latest insofar as those developments are concerned. Here is an article which was published by the New Yorker on December 1, 2014. It's a rather lengthy article. And I don't necessarily agree with everything which is in it, but I'd like to give you a few excerpts because I think it gives you a good idea as to what is happening in Europe, in Germany. It says Angela Merkel, the Chancellor of the Federal Republic of Germany, is the world's most powerful woman. The ongoing monetary crisis of the Eurozone has turned Germany into a regional superpower. One of Merkel's biographers calls her the Chancellor of Europe. A little later, Karl Theodor zu Gutenberg is quoted, who was Germany's defense minister from 2009 to 2011. He said that Merkel, Merkel took a Machiavellian approach to the Eurozone crisis. She had the stamina to keep her options open as long as possible and then veiled her decisions behind the cloud of complexity. Gutenberg said. This made it easier for her to change her mind several times, rather dramatically, but at the time no one noticed it at all. Merkel realized that she could not allow the Eurozone crisis to capsize the project of European unity. If the Euro falls, then Europe falls, she declared, and that is why we have been saying all along that the Euro will survive. The article goes on to say that Merkel's commitment to a united Europe comes from her sense of German interest. She needs Europe because Europe makes Germany bigger. Again, later, it says that Merkel takes a characteristically unsentimental view of Russia. She commented one time never to trust Mr. Putin. Talking about the Ukraine crisis, it says that Ukraine forced Merkel into a juggling act. Publicly, she said little, waiting for Russian misbehavior to bring the German public around. She needed to keep her coalition in the Bundestag on board, including the more pro-Russian Social Democrats. And she had to hold Europe together. Notice, she had to hold Europe together, which meant staying in close touch with 27 other leaders and understanding each one's constraints. How sanctions on Russia would affect London's financial markets, whether the French would agree to suspend delivery of amphibious assault ships already sold to the Russians, whether Poland and the Baltic states felt assured of NATO's support, the influence of Russian propaganda in Greece, Bulgaria's dependence on Russian gas, for sanctions to bite, Europe had to remain united. It also says that earlier this year, President, German President Joachim Gauck made headlines when he called on Germany to take its global responsibilities more seriously, including its role in military affairs. It was a kind of speech that Merkel, who had no comment, would never give, especially after a poll commissioned by the foreign ministry in May showed that 60% of the public was skeptical of greater German involvement in the world. So she is waiting until the German public comes around, because the Bible clearly prophesies that Germany will have a great military involvement in the world in a few years, maybe sooner than most think. Now here's an article by The Telegraph, dated November 24, saying, Britain is already a lame duck within the EU's internal governing structure and is losing influence by the day in Brussels, even before David Cameron holds a referendum on withdrawal. And then the article quotes Roman Prodi, the former Italian premier and ex-president of the European Commission, saying this, 
Germany is exercising an almost solitary power. The new presidents of the Commission and the Council are men who rotate around Germany's orbit. And above all, there is a very strong German presence among the directors, heads of cabinet and their deputies. When there is a problem between Europe and the United States, President Obama telephones Mrs. Merkel, not the British Prime Minister. In short, Germany has become the referee of Europe, and right now Germany is issuing the yellow cards to a lot of countries. It also says that Germany is the policy maker for a block of over 500 million people. It denies its own leadership. See, in other words, they are very careful not to make it obvious that they are leading Europe and everybody knows and sees that they are. They really don't like this position, but it's prophesied that they will take a very decisive role. Now, the author here then goes on with a comment which is very difficult to understand. Let me just read it first. It says, it is simply unthinkable that the EU can survive as a reconstituted Holy Roman Empire governed from Berlin, yet without at least the charisma and sanctity bestowed on the medieval Hohenstaufen by Rome. Now, I'm not quite sure what the author is saying, but I can tell you right now that that is exactly what is going to happen. We have seen Europe reunite nine times. In other words, the ancient Roman Empire has been uniting nine times, and it is prophesied that it will reunite one more time in these days. That will be the final restitution or resurrection, if you please, revival of the ancient Holy Roman Empire. And it is prophesied that it's being done under German direction. Exactly what we are saying and seeing today. Now, we have several booklets we prepared. One is Germany in Prophecy. Now, if you don't know the biblical prophecies about Germany, modern-day Germany, and how this all fits with what is being said today and in other of our programs, then please request a free booklet. There's another one, Europe in Prophecy. Europe in Prophecy tells you about the revivals of the Roman Empire, the ten revivals which are prophesied which, of course, leads to the return of Jesus Christ, because when we have the last tenth revival in operation, it will be a very short time only until Christ returns. Here's another free booklet, the ten European revivals of the ancient Roman Empire. And this booklet goes into much detail insofar as how these revivals came about, who revived them throughout history, and who is going to revive them one more time. Now, in this regard, we have to also understand that the revival of Europe is going to be done with the great influence of the Roman Catholic Church. We should not forget that the last six revivals and the coming seventh revival of Europe was done as a collaboration between state and church, between the political power and the Roman Catholic Church. In this regard, Deutsche Welle wrote on November 25 that Pope Francis spoke to the European Parliament in France and he urged the EU to remember the aims of its founders. Referring to the worsening worldwide situation of religious extremism, the Pope also called on Europe to appreciate its religious roots. And it goes on to say that after less than four hours, the Argentine Pope's airplane was scheduled for Rome leaving behind a clear message for Europe's politicians to unite, but to unite under the umbrella of the Roman Catholic Church, and especially this booklet on the 10 European revivals, and also the one on Europe and prophecy, will tell you how Europe reunited several times under the Catholic influence and umbrella. So what we are seeing today is leading towards the final revival and resurrection of the Roman Empire under German leadership. And so we should note of what's happening, and we should understand that because of these things, because they are happening, we also know that the return of Jesus Christ is very near. Thank you very much for listening. This is Norbert Link for the Standing Watch program.
Standing Watch is a presentation by The Church of the Eternal God, P.O. Box 270519, San Diego, California, 92198. More information is also available at our website, eternalgod.org.